Hey bot builders, I'm Gordy from BotPress and we're back with another chatbot built using the amazing new generative AI features of the BotPress Cloud Studio. This bot does something that I see a lot of folks on Discord asking about, and that is how do I get a bot to ask user questions, extract those answers, and then save those answers or do something else with them. And this bot will showcase three different ways that we can do that with a chatbot. And each of these ways have their own different pros and cons, we're going to talk about them as we go through them. So let's get started. With this bot, it asks a very basic three question survey. I'm going to start with the most basic way to do a survey, and that's with our capture cards. So the first question here is your name. My name is Gordy. Well, my name is Gody. My email, I'm going to say is Gordy at Gmail. That is not my real email address. Please don't email me there. Uh, I prefer to be contacted in the evening, and I have a really cool chatbot idea. So here we have all of the information kind of step by step as I set it. And let's take a look at this flow and how it works. When we take a look, we see that everything is done using the basic capture cards. We have a capture card for the name, one for the email, we have one for a contact time, which is a single choice with buttons, and we've got a raw input for the summary. And there's a lot of really great things about this approach. If we look at my little comment, for one, it's very robust and very simple. If you are building a bot, say, for a client who is not very technical or doesn't know how to build bots very well, you really can't go wrong with capture cards and buttons. They are super simple and very reliable. It's also very easy to add new questions. You just add a new node, put a new capture card in there, and bam, it's done just like that. However, when you have a lot of questions, if, I, if this survey was not four questions but eight or 12, that can get a pretty complex flow. So there's some disadvantages to this as well. But I will say that this approach is the most reliable approach to doing a survey and saving information. And if I was building a bot for a client that was going to talk to a thousand people a day and I could get away with using buttons, I would absolutely use buttons and capture cards because they are just so reliable. An interesting thing about capture cards and bot press as well is that they have this uh, setting here to extract from history. If the user says the information in one big message like this, then these capture cards will automatically extract it. Now, this doesn't work for uh, open data types like the raw input down here because it could accept anything. It doesn't know what to extract from the history. And that's going to play a key part in why some of the other approaches might be more advantageous. Let's look at the second approach, and that is using an AI task. This one is really cool because there's only one AI task that is running the show here. I have this big, long AI task prompt. It goes through, it looks at the chat history to extract the different variables and then saves them as these little workflow variables. Because we're using an AI task, we are able to parse all of the information from one message if our user gives a big message like this. While the capture cards could take the name, the email, the contact time, since those are pieces of structured data, the contact card cannot automatically extract the reason, which is much more abstract. However, with the magic of ChatGPT, the AI is able to look through and extract the reason. So we are able to get all of this information in one fell swoop. However, that's really where the advantages end. When you have one big AI task like this, your flow is extremely fragile to any kind of change. If you wanted to add a new question or update the responses, say instead of morning, afternoon, evening, I wanted to give a choice of actual time slots, that's really hard to do when everything is in one big AI task. You have to go through the process of fine tuning that AI task, look through and debug. It's it can be a real pain to make any changes. And even if you don't make any changes, if, say, OpenAI updates their model, or you want to use GPT-4 or a different model, then you have to go back and refine your prompt again. So this approach is very, very fragile, and it takes a lot of fine-tuning to get it right. If we're doing a demo and you want to show off how cool AI is, this is a fantastic way to do that. 
But if this was a production system and I had a thousand people a day talking to this bot, I would not want to put all of my faith into one single AI task. I would want to kind of hedge my bets and put some safety in there. What if we could combine the versatility and comprehensive extraction of the AI task with the predictability and safety of the capture cards? We can do that with some code. And let me show you the results. We'll start a new chat and go code plus AI. My name is Gordy. Email is gordy at gmail.com. I would like to be contacted in the morning. And I have this really cool chatbot idea. Now you'll already see a couple of things. It's using my name, it's giving me a bit more personalized information, and that's all because of how it's built. This flow takes an approach that's used when calling OpenAI functions from other frameworks like Langchain, where it's a bit more code heavy. To start, we define classes for each of the different data types that we want to extract. Each class has its own name, value, and description, and we're going to use this description later in the AI task. We take all of these new classes and instantiate workflow variables with them, and then we enter a loop. In this loop, the first thing that happens is we use more code to find out which variables are not set. And again, we've got two sets of variables here. One that's our list of things to ask, and another set of variables of the answers to those questions. We compare these two lists with code to see which answers we have and which answers we still don't have. And we take one of the answers that we don't have and pass that to the next step using this variable workflow.nextQuestion. This is all passed to the AI task, where we give that next question, as well as the chat transcript, and a little bit of instruction. And this is where the AI is told to ask for the email, ask for the time slot, ask for the reason. And all these things happen right here in the AI task. In this AI task, we ask for a personalized and kind follow-up question based upon the direction. And this is where you get the AI doing things like asking for your name and using your name later on in the follow-up questions. Some advantages of this approach is that it's more reliable than just the AI task alone, but because of that, it is code heavy. And if you're not a programmer, if you're not technical, this can feel a bit overwhelming. Some more advantages is that the AI can answer uh, out of scope questions and linking to a knowledge base is really easy. With this workflow, we only need to enable knowledge on one node, whereas in capture cards, we would have to enable it on all the nodes, on our AI task, it's also one node, but that can interfere with how the survey goes. Because this flow has the knowledge kind of separate from the next question, we're able to get a much more controlled response when the bot answers questions, and the bot goes right back on track after giving the answer. It's really cool. As always, this bot will be available on our Discord server. And if you're not already on our Discord server, come join us. It's a great place. Folks like me and many other bot press experts will hang out there. And we're happy to help talk about your bot, troubleshoot any issues, and give you tips and tricks on bot building. Well, that wraps up this bot, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy bot building.